a very special guest coming to us from Perth. Her name is Louise Matson, and Louise is the corporate women's shoe specialist. She's also the founder of Louise M Shoes. Now, Louise has used her 17 years of experience as a flight attendant to de develop her very own luxury shoe brand for airline cabin crew and professional and executive women. She's traveled the world searching for shoes that would meet the requirements of looking professional and stylish while working long days on your feet. I know about that when I was in my corporate life. As a result, Louise now has her shoes made by a shoe manufacturer in the luxury brand category located in the Tuscany region of Italy. Known as the shoe lady, and I have to say I'm a little bit known as the shoe lady too, but we'll touch upon that in a minute. Louise's shoes are described by her clients as the best cabin sh crew shoes ever and the most comfortable corporate shoes on this planet. Loved by women in many professions, and I've personally seen and I know most, most famously known to be wearing her pointy red beautiful points. Naomi Simpson, she wears those beautiful reds. I, I, I want a pair of those at some point. And she even been known to do 15,000 steps in them. That's ridiculous. But that's how comfy they must be. So the business journey is ongoing with her shoe brand, uh, which was perfected back in 2018. So it was five years uh, on her pursuit to find these comfortable corporate shoes. Louise is also a wife, mother and grandmother, even though she, you wouldn't think it looking at her, who loves to travel and still works in the airline industry, although her feet now are firmly on the ground. That's just wonderful. Welcome to the show, Louise. Oh, thanks, Ria. It's really lovely to be here and have a chat with you. Now, let's, your feet are firmly on the ground. So does that mean you're not, I mean, I know obviously we're not flying a whole lot now, but does that mean that you're not really flying around anymore? Uh, I'm not a flight attendant anymore. Mm. So I'm not actually working in a metal tube every day, <laughs> but I'm based uh, out at Perth Airport. Uh, working for Qantas Airlines as a customer service agent. So mainly my main job there is check-in, but also manage the departure and arrival of the aircraft. Great. Yeah. So you've been in the industry now for so, so 17 years, you said, but um, you were a little bit of a late bloomer uh, to the airline industry. It was I almost was. unheard of. Tell I was about. actually um, 30 when I became a flight attendant. I did apply when I was uh, about 19, 20 mm -hmm. and wasn't successful. And, and then I went on to um, get married, have babies. And then once the girls were in primary school, I went back and applied for a regional airline here in Perth, West Australia called Scarborough Airlines and got a job there. So that's where I, I did a lot of my flying. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was 30 yet with two children, two school-aged children, which was unheard of at the time, really. And I believe the only reason I got that position was the flight attendant manager had children pretty much the same age, mm -hmm. um, but everyone else in the company were single girls. So yes, I was definitely a late bloomer to being a, being a flight attendant. Love it. I, I mean, I love going against the grain anyway. So you were saying, I mean, you were in the travel industry first, you've always loved flying and then eventually once the girls were a bit older then you thought now's the time I'm going to be a flight attendant. Yeah now's the time to actually be me um, yeah. and have something for me. I'd always focus on everyone else and of course you know any role that I was going to do you know had to fit in with the family but I made sure that was that worked that yeah I was determined Awesome. And, air, and aircraft can't wait for you. <laughs> you have to be there. You have to be there a long time. <laughs> oh, 100%. I've run for a few, uh, quite a few flights in my time, I must say. Um, <laughs> but, but having said that, I mean, I've always admired, you know, the fact that flight attendants have to stand for the most of the flights and, you know, be, be professional and friendly and so courteous and this plane is moving side to side. I mean, I'm not the best flyer, I'll admit um, but yeah, being on your feet for long hours and, and long flights, I mean, that's a, it's a tremendous thing to do. Um, yes, day after day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so this is sort of where the, I guess the necessity for the appropriate shoe wear kind of came about. Absolutely. Well, I was a flight attendant for 17 years, so I looked 
every year, like for 17 years for mm -hmm. shoes that are appropriate. Um, I wanted to look professional and stylish, of course, in the uniform. Mm -hmm. Also, the shoes had to meet uniform requirements. There's particular heel heights and heel circumference, and that's all to do with efficiency and safety. Uh, stability in the cabin with those rocky times and um, but also we needed that comfort for for all day wear so I always you know bought the best shoes I could possibly buy mm -hmm. um, so I did look and feel stylish and comfortable however it became increasingly difficult to find those shoes and that's kind of where my story starts. Great. Tell us about it. What was, what was the first thing you're like, I can't find shoes. This is ridiculous. Like, what did you Well, it, it came to that point where I couldn't find shoes. Um, you, as you know, retail stores follow fashion trends. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have all the buckles of the bows, the stilettos, the platforms, the patents, and uniform requirements um, don't allow that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is not appropriate for any work environment, any professional work environment. So it became increasingly difficult to find until I just remember the, the point, the realisation, and you might like to jump on that aircraft, come on board with me. And I'm on the aircraft, gathering speed down the runway, ready for takeoff out of Perth. And I'm in the front seat near the flight deck in my cabin crew seat. And we took off and I got this glance down, I glanced down at my shoes and I thought, oh my gosh, what is this, what has this come to? You know, I was in these ugly shoes, this big, thick kind of vinyl material and you know, the lining was some kind of mesh and, oh, they looked terrible, they felt terrible. And at that moment, I just lost my confidence, lost, lost my, I was disempowered really. Mm. And I, that was kind of the realisation where I thought, wow, you know, why can't we have style and comfort together? And it became, you know, my mission to actually start searching the world. And I thought, well, if I can't find them anywhere, I've been searching for them, I'm going to have to go and find them. So that's where my search began. I love it. That's really when <laughs> a lot of the best ideas are, are, are born, isn't it? You know, out of necessity. It's, uh, we, yeah, absolutely. We, we can't find what we need. And then, you know, someone as like yourself was like, all right, let's go get this created and, and get it going. So what, what did you do next? Oh, okay. So, well, in actual fact, I, I went back to uni because I knew I wanted to start a business mm -hmm. and I didn't have business experience and I hadn't completed my business or any university degree after school. I had started and hadn't stopped. I hadn't finished. So I wanted to go back and complete that. And it was through that process. I did a Bachelor of Commerce and majored in Entrepreneurship and Marketing. Mm -hmm which was fantastic. I just loved the entrepreneurship degree. And through that process, I knew I wanted to do something around shoes. And then the niche became cabin crew and corporate women. Um, yeah, I knew if I came up with the right shoe for cabin crew that cabin crew loved, mm -hmm. corporate women would benefit from that as well. Yeah. So yeah, I started the search. I went to uni finished that and then I started actually well, during that time while I was still flying I was searching for shoes so started locally in Perth look, um, looked for wholesalers here and went to see what they had but I didn't I wasn't happy with the quality of them mm -hmm. um, a lot of shoes out of uh, in, available in uh, Australia are uh, made in Asia and I was looking for a European quality yep. um, so and then a friend said why don't you go to the Sydney Fashion Fair and she had a boutique here so I went under her um, name because even then I didn't have a business name yet and so I went along to that and I was disappointed because I couldn't find any sort of shoes there that suited what I was looking for but then I came away and I thought, gosh, that just reinforced the fact that there's a gap in the market. There's just not these classic shoes that are suitable for the work environment, for that professional look mm -hmm. um, available in Australia. Then I went further afield and it was to European wholesalers that are based here in Australia. So that's when things started getting interesting. I met with them. I went to their sort of shoe fairs, which were held in hotels, mm -hmm. um, and looked at their shoes that were European brands, but they were representing them here in Australia. The thing is, though, they only had a small portion 
of that brand's collection. But it's, it did start getting, like, me thinking, look, there are people that make shoes to the quality that I want um, and that might be able to help me. So the next step was to go further afield to Europe. So I found out the best European shoe fairs and that took me off to Germany and to Italy. Nice. And so that's when <laughs> I got very excited um, about the possibilities. Um, and at that stage, I wasn't thinking of my own shoe brand. So this, I'm just trying to find suppliers. Mm -hmm. But that brings up challenges as well, because there's language issues <laughs> involved with that and all sorts of things, costs and travel time and things like that. So, yeah, that was the next step. So um, it, it, oh, it's exhilarating and exhausting at the same time, because yeah. um, you might be able to imagine, you know, I don't, you've probably been into the Sydney Exhibition Centre or, you know, the Melbourne Conference Centre or something, and there are these massive halls. Yeah. Well, in Europe, you walk in and there's like seven of those <laughs> full of shoes. <laughs> so, and there's just row upon row upon row of shoe um, manufacturers. Wow. Um, and there's all sorts of languages going around, mm -hmm. around you as well. So you really have to have a focus. And my focus was... Um, shoes around the airline requirements of hill heights and hill circumference yeah uh, and a closed toe shoe mm -hmm. um and then my four style comfort quality and stability so if i didn't have those specifics that niche mm -hmm. i would have been there for days <laughs> because you get distracted by all the, the colors and yeah. bright lights around you so, um, so yeah, so that and was, that was my next step. Okay. Yep. So you found a supplier at this, at this point, is this where we found it? No, at Not this yet. point, well, yes. Um, I found, uh, a couple of brands, um, mm -hmm. the long time European shoe brands, which mm -hmm. were fantastic. So I stopped them for a little bit, but I had to, um, order those through the Australian European representative. Okay. So, um, so I would order them and about a year to a year and a half later, I would get them. Right. right? Yep. And then I wouldn't be able to reorder them because the next season they didn't have them in black. They might have them in blue mm -hmm. um, or I couldn't get them quick enough or, you know, the quantities were too small for what they were dealing with or, all yeah. these kind of challenges. So, um, but I was fortunate enough to pick up one Italian supplier and I used to have their shoes. Mm -hmm. But then uh, over time, I got to know them more and I said to them, would it be possible to have my own shoe brand? And then we discussed all the elements of the shoe, all the materials to make them exactly how I want them, perfect them for my market. And they said, yes, well, see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so awesome. Let, let's just pause there for a moment because this mm. is just really highlights the process. You know, if, if you're not passionate about your mission, many would have already dropped off and went, this is too hard. This is too lengthy. This is the time. Look how much time it takes, how many people. There's a language barrier. I have to travel to European country to meet and greet these people. It's 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 really a testament to the to the fact that you've stuck it out, that you've been able to find this this one supplier, this one brand that's just that's been able to stand behind you and offer you the opportunity to just be like, let's just get this right. Let's make it to the specifications and, and let's, you know, yeah, do it the right way and at the best quality way. And of course, Italian, I mean, look, I'm a bit biased, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, look, you know, they're known. That's why, um, you know, I love Italian sh footwear because, mm. I mean, they're leaders in fashion, but they're also known for their high quality products and their highly skilled craftsmanship and you know the quality of the materials that they use i mean that's just the way they are they don't want to make anything that's not high quality um you know they're so proud of their product so to work with them was just uh incredible and i'm very fortunate because my manufacturers um 
My shoes are actually manufactured in a high-end luxury brand factory. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm, I just feel very grateful. There's you know, a, a pile of these Louise M boxes next to the um, massive pile of, um, of Prada actually so um so yeah i feel very fortunate but yeah there's been lots of challenges there as well with specifications and and yeah. things like i'm quite right there as well so it has been this is year eight so wow. and that's another thing you know to point out that you know it does it does take time to mm -hmm. and yeah it's worthwhile waiting and taking longer to get what you what you really want Absolutely. A lot of people will quit just before that, that, that moment of enlightenment and that moment of, of reward is, is about to present its, itself, you know, and I know you've given us the, the quick and, and shortened version of the entire story, but you know, you, you mentioned that it was five years in the making really to get it to, to the exact way that you wanted it to be and, and to have a brand now named after you that, that you can stand behind and be proud of. Um, but of course there must've been some, some, you know, challenges along the way to steer you in every which way. What would you say is, is, is one that really springs to mind as, as a massive challenge for you? Um, actually I just came across a little video I did. Um, I often in my travels do little videos of me, like walking the streets of Florence or something like that. And this particular okay. one was me came back from the shoe factory and um, it had been a bad day. I had had an issue with specification and had shoes delivered to Perth. Uh, of course, I pay for everything before they leave the factory. And then I have to pay for shipping, duties and taxes. And then they arrived on my doorstep. I was all excited and I opened the box and they had used a different outsole from what I wanted. Um, and to anyone else, that wouldn't matter. But I knew what I wanted was even better than what they had had provided mm -hmm. um, oh and also to the lining color because my, my shoes are all in my branding uh, mm -hmm. specific so they used a dark lining in there which i wanted on the louise m lining um however um i can't really return them they're branded louise m when we had this sort of fight or oh, not fight this uh, negotiation this <laughs> argument <laughs> um lots of arms flailing i actually had a business partner at the time and we flew over and said look what can we do this is yeah. you know cost us massive amounts of money yeah. and um and i don't want to sell them but they couldn't sell them either because they're yeah. unique to me so um anyway we negotiated uh through um an interpreter that they would give me a bit of a credit um you know, of course, I still had to pay for the shipping, still had to pay for dues mm. and taxes and all the materials, but I got a small credit. So the next step was them making some more shoes. And I thought, well, rather than the landing on my doorstep, not correct, I'll go over there. And, and I was under the impression that they were already, they were already made. Anyway, I got there and <laughs> of course they chat, 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 take me to lunch, <laughs> which yeah. is the time to do. Yeah. And then I go, but you know, I need to go to the factory, need to see these shoes. And um, so I got there and there was hardly any made oh. and they still went right. So I was really dejected and I didn't know what to do. So anyway, I was meant to fly home the next day. And I said to my husband, rang him and I said, things aren't going well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, really, I should stay and sort this out, but I'm just exhausted mentally, physically. And he said, well, you know, why don't you stay? Why don't you just make a phone call to Qantas and see if you can delay this flight a couple of days and sort this out rather than come home? So as much as I didn't want to, I just wanted to go home. <laughs> I just wanted to cry. Um, I went, um, I rang Qantas and they said, yeah, sure. You know, it was like a $200 change fee or something. I was hoping it was like thousands and, you know, that would make me go home. <laughs> yeah. But um, and then I thought, no, I need a second opinion. I need some help on this. I need advice. I Do I get to change the whole shoe or do I just go, oh, okay, you know, that'll be fine. So I emailed uh, an expert and he's a professor at the footwear school in Milan. Mm -hmm. And I'd been to footwear school in New York and he presented that. So I knew him from there. Beautiful. I went to New York because they all speak English. <laughs> 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 um, but so anyways, I emailed him, can you meet me the next day? And he said, yes. So I got on a train to Milan the next day from Florence. Mm -hmm. 
um, met with him and um, spoke um, about the specification of the shoes. And he already knew my shoes a little bit from seeing me in New York and I took all my shoes with me there. Um, so he said, no, Louise, stick to what you want in the shoe. Um, that is what they've done is good, but what you want is better. Mm -hmm. So um, he gave me the confidence to go back to the factory the next day, which is another half hour train ride out of Florence into further into Tuscany, um, and say to them, no, I'm not gonna accept those ones. I need you to make it this way. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so it was a big lesson in yet yeah, believe in yourself. Yeah. And I mean, I always thought they knew better than me and they do, but they don't actually know, really understand what I'm wanting the shoes for. Mm -hmm. It's only me that really understand long days on your feet in a professional environment. Yeah. You so, lived and breathed it for 17 years, you know, yes. you know what you know exactly. And that's the thing, you know, they're the experts in shoes, but you're the expert in what you need and, yes. and you're trying to create something unique and you have now, thank goodness. And, and thankfully is uh, this is a beautiful example of a moment where you've had to summon your, your inner super strength. Because like you said, you just wanted to go home and oh, forget about this. This is terrible, you know, but uh, thank goodness you had the right support. You've got a supporting husband and, and everything seems to work its way out, you know, and, and, and yeah, you had that confidence of the, the shoe um, connoisseur, which should, should we say the, you know, you learned a lot from him and, and, and he gave you that confidence and that's, that's incredible. That's that's the real birth, isn't it, of, of how the standards yeah. are today. Yeah, really draw on people that have supported you and you've met along the way because um, God, I'm so grateful for the people that have been along my journey with me uh, and at different times just been perfect for what I've needed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just when you think you can't do it, pull yourself out of that and really search for it and find the solution yeah there's always a way where there's a will there's a way and you're on the other side of the world trying to converse with with, with Italian Sue <laughs> <laughs> well that's the other thing I had to find another interpreter because I'd been to the factory and they organized the interpreter yeah. but I need to go back there mm. so um yeah I mean that's a whole nother story you know she was the PA to the top of Prada um, yeah. the top executive of Prada for years. So that was a whole nother story. That was, so the people I've met along the way are fantastic as well. <laughs> what a journey. What a journey indeed. I mean, okay. So that's, so that was a big challenging thing. That's right at the, the, the forefront, you know, I mean, obviously it's taking five years, you know, and then you've got all these, you know, still, you're still ironing out creases, still yeah. getting things going. Um, and then, I guess you, there was a period of time where you were presented with other challenges, you know, that, cause there's, there's not just one, there's, there's, <laughs> there's many, you know, you find momentum and then life reminds you, well, hold on a second. <laughs> you still got some more growing to do. So what would you say is, was the next step? Cause you, you know, you and I have had a chat and, and you'd mentioned that there was a period of time where you sort of lost that confidence again, you'd found it, but then you sort of lost it again. Yes, definitely. I was really keen to have a business partner um, just for the support and a bit of financial backing as well, um, just to speak with a lot of the time, you know, about business. And um, I was very fortunate that I found one and it was great because uh, he really believed in my business, which gave me confidence to go on and he did all due diligence to you know before he invested so that was great um he came along to Italy with me a couple of times met with the factory actually was quite surprised at how informal our meetings were <laughs> uh, in the factory but they're very much about family and it was yeah. anyway but uh, that's another story but yeah. um so it was great to have someone to travel with yeah we'd have weekly meetings and bounce things off each other but all along we had this slight difference in focus and he because the airline industry was such a massive market um he was wanting to focus more on that uh, whereas I knew and I always wanted cabin crew wearing my shoes I knew exactly what they needed but I always wanted corporate women 
to be aware of them and for the shoes to be appropriate for them because I knew they'd benefit from them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we had that slight difference. I, I always goes, yes, yes, we'll do cabin crew shoes, but I still want to do corporate women. Yeah. So, um, and we we're trying to find ways to really promote it, promote it. And I was sort of meant to be more of the marketing side of things. I did do a marketing degree along with that entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. but, um, I just couldn't find nothing. I, I, I'd say things, try things. And I felt like every week he was saying, no, that's not going to work. No, that's not good enough. No, no. And in my head, I kept hearing this, no, no, no. Mm. Um, at this point, you might, I, oh, it lasted two years. And then I um, had to find it. I was actually hoping he would pull out first but I actually got to the stage where I was crying most after most meetings and my daughter said to me mum if I was coming home from work crying all the time you would make me uh, find a solution yeah. change something get a different job or find a solution so it was at that point she she just spurred me on and I had to get up the courage to say look this isn't working mm -hmm. um but the difficulty it was my brother and don't worry we still have this amazing sibling relationship <laughs> um and I'm still so very very grateful to him but I did lose my confidence through that yeah um I guess you know he's my big brother I was trying to make him proud and you know we we're trying to grow the business and it just mm. wasn't really happening the way he wanted it to be happening um so yeah I felt I disappointed him and you know, you don't want to do that to your sibling that you love. So anyway, he was very gracious and um, walked away. But yeah, it was great having him then. But after that, yeah, I lost my confidence. So anyway, I lost me. And but now I've started building that up. And last year, just having that reprieve, um, COVID has not been good to many <laughs> but great to so many um yeah. but through that process through that you know I was able to just back off a little bit and um reassess things um found a an amazing um mindset person she's actually a very dear friend of mine she used to um, fly with me mm -hmm. and she has mind motivation coaching now and um, Maya has helped my mindset a lot and then my business coach as well, he's helped me with the finance side of things. I was always stressed about finance and I've now got a different take on money. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've, I've gone back to swimming. I've had some swimming lessons. I've gone back to, I know, reading up, reading up about things I like, like restaurants. And unfortunately I'm not traveling. Uh, and that's like, um, that's my thing. Shoes and travel are my thing. Yeah. Um, but then again, I, yeah, I'm filling in time with family, my granddaughter and things like that, but making time yeah. for all that. That's mm. incredible. Thank you for sharing that. That's, it's such, uh, it, it, you're just sharing with us these, these massive lessons that, that have really shaped and formed not only your brand and your business, but you as a person, because I mean, really you are the, the woman behind the brand. So, um, as, as your business has grown and, and, and expanded now, it's, it's, so are you, you're evolving and expanding with it, which is, which is wonderful, you know, so you incorporate both. And, and even though you had that period of time, like there was a, there was a good period of time, you and your brother got to travel, you got to do all these things. And, and I, I guess, you know, figuring out what you didn't want, like I, it made you even clearer on what you do want for, for your business and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely a massive learning. Yeah. I think now, you know, I still have challenges and, mm. um, but I only have myself to blame for things <laughs> and I need to dig deep and find those solutions. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Hmm. That's great. It's, um, it, it's interesting because you, so you mentioned that you finished school, you went to uni, you didn't finish uni, then you became a full-time mom. And then you, then you pursued your career in the travel industry because you love travel. So that was your first foot in the door. And then you, you found this opportunity to become a flight attendant, which was your dream. So you finally did that like a decade later. <laughs> and then you went to uni, was it in your forties? Did you say you were? Yeah, I say I did, did things all the wrong way around, but of course for me it was right. You know, I had babies in my 20s, braces in my 30s, and you in my 40s. <laughs> Brilliant. 
hey, look, there's no right or wrong. It's just the right for you, right? You know, yeah, absolutely. And it's never too late to try something. Look, I'm just having swimming lessons. I um, <laughs> I can swim, but not mm. like lengths and lengths of freestyle. So, um, and I found being in the water now, I just really relax and um, that's fantastic. So yeah, swimming lessons in my 50s. There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's a form of stress management, you know, exercise, that time alone to, to be in the zone, to be, you know, that's what I, I love about with my clients is giving them, you know, you don't just have to be in the gym. Like, don't think that you have to train in the gym six, five, six days a week. Like, what else do you enjoy? Do you enjoy swimming? Do you enjoy um, running? Do you want to, you know, going for walks with your partner and it is very therapeutic or even yourself? you know, bike rides, like there are many, many ways to be fit, you know, live a healthy and, and fit lifestyle. Yes. My thing is walking down along the beach, um, not on the sand, but on the, on the pavement, but just looking mm. out at water and, and, you know, that's when I'm finding with swimming, actually being in the water. I'm really enjoying that. Mm. Brilliant. I'll get back to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a personal trainer for a while, which was fantastic, but I just can't, yeah. And I can't put that in my headspace at the moment, but I will get back there. One step at a time. <laughs> Swimming. <laughs> but yeah, no, the beach is, is definitely my go-to. Like I'm always drawn to the ocean when I need to reset. You know, I love grounding in the in the sand and, and in the water. And I just, there's just something so peaceful and calming about the ocean that I love. Yeah, really. but also too, I look out at the ocean and it's so expansive. And I think mm. all the opportunities out there and, and where is that land beyond so yeah I, I see it as opportunities when I look out at the ocean 100 percent. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant that's brilliant so wow we've, we've covered so much today I'm just like trying to take it all in as I'm sure everyone else is I mean if, if you can't see what I'm looking at because you're not looking at the video she has an entire wall of shoes behind her <laughs> ah so now like so you so people know you as a shoe lady have have you if I knew you 20, 30 years ago, have you always been a shoe fanatic or shoe fan? Like, has this been? Absolutely. Since I finished school uh, well, and that year and a half at uni yeah, and yeah. got my first paycheck um, from my tourism commission job, mm -hmm. um, I went straight to this. There was this amazing Italian shoe shop in mm -hmm. uh, one of the arcades in the city. And yeah, I bought a pair of shoes. They just had the most amazing Italian made shoes. So I've kind of got a full circle. Um, so yeah, always wore really Italian made shoes when I was younger. It was my thing, summer handbags, summer yeah. whatever, but I'm definitely a shoe girl. So um, yeah, and I would treasure my shoes. I've done a lot of travel and I would buy, you know, luxury brands um, on all my travels. They also mm -hmm. all had a bit of a story behind mm -hmm. them and I, Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were yeah they were my story and um yeah I love that. I just appreciate being able to have them and I appreciate the workmanship even now that I've gone into the factory and see how they're actually handmade yeah. um and the time taken on on doing that um yeah I've always been a shoe girl so it's no surprise that you have your own shoe brand now, really. To no, because, yeah, when I was thinking of the business, I was thinking shoes and travel. And then, you know, of course, I was ended up in these terrible shoes and mm. that kind of just all gelled together. That was, uh, this is what it was going to be. And they were going to be yeah. made, my brand, when I finally decided on, I was going to make my own brand, they were, they were going to be made initially. There was just no other choice. Mm -hmm. um, that's where they were going to be. So... Yeah, full circle. I was, I was saying to you um, another time we spoke that um, everything leads to something. So, you know, you might not realize now where you're at, where you might be in 20, 30 years, but just keep doing something. Just keep doing something. It'll lead to something else. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's funny. So I, when I introduced you as the shoe lady, um, I, I, I have to say that I, I used to be a lover of heels, um, maybe not as much as you, or, or I did definitely have a love of shoes, um, of heels specifically. I had a lot of heels because obviously back in corporate life, you know, that's what I used to wear. Like they were uncomfortable. I would try to smile and look pretty wearing these very uncomfortable heels that looked fabulous, um, but they we're not comfortable at all. And that, and that's just, I think that's what a lot of us women do is we buy these, these beautiful looking shoes 
But, you know, the problem is if you're wearing these beautiful shoes and you can't look beautiful wearing them, then you, you're <laughs> doing a little bit of disservice to yourself and the shoes because they're like, I love your shoes, but you're walking like, you know, a giraffe learning how to walk in them. It's not quite the right look if you're trying to look professional um, <laughs> on any level. And so I have to say, since I've been in the health and wellness uh, scene, I don't really wear heels only on a necessity Um level now but uh, I am a, a sneaker lady now I suppose I was you the shoe the heel lady I'm the sneaker lady so I <laughs> have equal appreciation for a really really uh, well-made pair of shoes I love all the different kinds of sneakers because that's what I live in pretty much 365 days a year nowadays <laughs> yeah fantastic well when you need corporate shoes you need Louise and but what I say is don't buy so many shoes mm -hmm spend perhaps a bit more on a quality shoe that you'll just love putting on and my shoe I like to think my shoes empower women that's what I want I want to empower women I want them to be confident to walk down that street without even having to think about their feet you know having to think about that crack in the pavement um yeah to, to walk tall and walk confidently yes I think that's super important. And yes, you are absolutely right. Like, buy less, buy better. Buy <laughs> quality. <laughs> I have always preached that quality over quantity. Everyone's just like, buy lots of shoes. And I was like, well, no, if you buy really good quality ones, um, they'll last you forever. Like they'll repay you many, many times over. Yeah. Do you um, know the other thing women do is they'll spend a lot of money on a shoe they wear on a Saturday night occasionally but they won't spend the same kind of money on a shoe they can wear every day to work. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. They spend hours in there on their, on their feet. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> it is another story. So I, I think this is probably a, a good time to drop in that, um, that Louise has graciously offered the uh, superhuman family a uh, opportunity to acquire um, a pair of her or pair or two or more it depends on you how many you want to get but um she's going to offer us all uh, the opportunity if we sign up for her uh, vip client list we will get 25 dollars to spend in her store not only that she is going to throw in the conditioning shoe cream i believe it is and a buffing cloth so we can make sure that these shoes will last us forever <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you'll love it. Um, and now uh, be warned, you'll be addicted. You'll, um, <laughs> I have clients that just come back and buy the whole range. So yeah, be careful. <laughs> I, I have already had a look and I want a pair of the red points and I want a pair of the black points. That's just Yeah, they're great. They're, yeah, they're all round. <laughs> Wear them Saturday nights too. Just any time you, you want to look professional and be able to walk. I mean, if Naomi Simpson can walk 15,000 steps in those, um, yeah that's already that's already sold me uh, yeah well she hashtag no need for sneakers so that was really nice of her to do that yeah <laughs> well, like I said I'm a sneaker fan so there's always going to be a need for sneakers for me but, <laughs> um, I, I I really enjoy speaking with you today uh, Louise I just have one more question to ask you and mm -hmm. that is what does summon your superhuman mean to you well I think we've been talking a lot about it actually it's getting that inner something that inner strength if digging deep and finding that strength you didn't know you had you thought you'd used it all and wow it comes out what what pictures i have in my mind is that um a wonder woman pose you know the mm -hmm. i can do attitude yep. um amy cuddy talks about it a lot the power pose uh yep. So yeah, just dig deep, summon that extra strength and, and yeah, it's an empowering thing, isn't it? Strength and confidence. It is. It is. And it's all within us if we really dig deep enough to allow it to come out. And yeah. I sometimes think... it's deeper than. <laughs> <laughs> That's but what makes it. you stronger. I think that is like. It, you know, that brings the rewards. Yeah. Yeah, the harder, like the, the more back against the wall you have to get, the more you can thrive, the more you can really grow from whatever life is trying to teach you. So you've definitely shared with us a lot of the circumstances in your life and especially in your business career specifically, where you've had to really channel that that inner superhuman and and come out victorious at the end so thank you so much for your time today louise and uh we graciously thank you for sharing your your stories with us and uh we look forward to enjoying your shoes <laughs>
Oh, thanks so much, Rhea. It's been an absolute pleasure, firstly, you know, meeting you. And then I hope, you know, someone else listening will be inspired to actually start something that they uh, they believe in. And no matter how hard it is, just keep going. And, um, and yeah, you'll achieve it. Thank you so much, Louise. You're, yeah, you're a blessing. Thanks, Rhea. Thank you.